able to get my weapon uh, doing some destructible damage. We'll just preview it here. Uh, boom, 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 boom. I can shoot at them. They do have collision, but they're not breaking the way that I might want them to. So the way that I'm going to fix that is in one of two ways. One is that I can modify the projectile so that it will apply damage to anything that it hits. So this is a way for me to kind of create the agnostic notion of damage in the game and not really have to worry about what type of thing it's hit. It's just going to try and apply some damage when it hits it. So we might try that as our first option. So in our first person BP, we've got the blueprints. Crack open the first person projectile. Now, it's got a condition here to see whether or not it's, uh, the object is simulating physics. So if it is, it's going to add a physics impulse to it. And I can demonstrate that quite easily here by going, oh, what's the cube object? One meter cube with a chamfer. Let's do that one. And then we'll turn on simulate physics and boom, that falls down. When I shoot it, it flies away. So that's cool. That's awesome that we can do that. Uh, and it won't bother even trying to apply that impulse to something that doesn't have simulate physics enabled. However, I want to handle what happens when it hits something like my destructible. So I could do a thing where I go through and I go, okay, all right, well, if it's simulating physics, we want to add an impulse. Uh, and if it's not, then let's just apply some generic damage. But I might also still want to have some damage applied to something that's simulating physics. So let's just apply damage. Hits the specified actor with generic damage. Apply point damage. Apply radial damage. I'm pretty sure that with the destructible components, they only, re well, in my experience, I think they only seem to like the radial damage because then they know where the thing has actually hit them. So, we want the, let's say the base damage is one and the origin is going to be the hit location. So when it gets this hit event, it's gonna go, where did I hit? We'll set the damage radius to something like 150. Uh, we'll tell it to do the full damage and we'll plug that into the false, okay? So with any luck, this should work. What we can do is check on our, on our destructible mesh that there's a damage threshold, a damage spread. We can turn on impact damage. So when, some, when a physics object collides with it, it'll apply damage. But I think for now, it should probably, we can shoot that thing and boom, boom, it broke, boom, it broke, boom, it broke, but not in kind of a spectacular way, not in a spectacular way. So we can, we can fix that. We can, um, probably then plug that into add impulse at location. And in fact, we don't really care whether it's simulating physics or not but we'll see if it works by routing it through that way so that it comes back actually what we need to do is turn off gravity for our object so uh ooh, impact damage debris lifetime there's really cool things like accumulate damage and world support and stuff like that that are really awesome for creating things that will break down over time. But I think we might... Okay, so here's an example, right? We get rid of the cube thing here, go back to wherever I created this, right? So if I put this here and I hit play and I shoot it, all of the bits crumble away and that's all well and good, but I can change in its physics settings to not be affected by gravity. So it just floats there and if I shoot it, the bits just crumble away and I can continue to shoot at them, and break it up even more if I want to. That's a little bit less predictable. So that's kind of the behavior that we'd want out of our asteroids. But by default, we can't really turn that on until we've created the destructible object. So what that probably means is that we need to have a boolean in here, which is destructible gravity. 
All right, so we add the destructible component, we get this, and then we'll branch on that so that we can decide if we say, yes, the destructible should have gravity, then ostensibly we don't need to do anything. But if we turn destructible gravity off, then we need to get the destructible component and set enable gravity to false. So what it should do is, as it's going through the loop every time, it'll say, hey, by the way, after I created you, and before I proceed to go to the next one in the loop, by the way, turn off gravity. Don't have any gravity on you, stupid thing. Boom, and they just float away. Ba -ba -boom. Ba -ba boom So, I think the radial damage and the impulse is probably not doing exactly what we want. So let's say we want to have a much bigger impulse. Impulse at location. What's it doing at the other component? Let's go impulse at location. Add impulse. Add radial impulse. Let's do that. Let's see. And we want the origin to be that one. We want the radius to be 500 and the strength to be something like 500. And we'll set that to be velocity change. This is probably going to go absolutely bonkers. Bonkers. Oh, hello. What's it? Ah, oh, I need a target. So I want to add it to the other component, I guess. I guess. I guess. Yeah. That hopefully should be right. Hmm, kind of, but not really quite. So it might be, hmm, what's it change? Strength, 5,000 maybe? I guess, the origin, the radius. Let's see, let's see what this does now. Whoa. Okay, so it seems to do it the second time you hit it. Yeah, it's definitely doing it. The second time you hit a chunk, it's definitely doing it, but it's not doing it on that initial one. Hmm. Hmm. Animal impulse. Apply radial damage. Dual damage. Damage radius is 150. Strength should be like 2,500. But why would it not be doing it? Maybe I just need to... No, because that's looking for a component and not an actor. So, I guess that should be doing the right thing. Hmm. But, at any rate, you can see there that, for the most part, that does what we want it to. We fire a projectile at it, it breaks, it smashes, and then if we hit it again, they go absolutely bonkers. But you guys can figure that out yourselves. Um, probably don't need that much of a physics impulse on those chunks. Look at him go! He's going off into space! And that's the way that we can set them up. So that's um, our field. That's our spawn area field. Uh, let's set this back to child actor. And that's nice and good. That's cool. We can do that. We can have an instant static mesh in there that just uh, works. And by the way, not for nothing, I was wrong in my other video. They do all have collision on them. So that's fantastic. Bam, bam. And, uh, and we can finally give it a destructible. Beautiful. Well, I hope that you guys have gotten something useful out of this uh, bit of business. Um, if you're interested in how the asteroid was made, then check out the long-winded video that I'll post after this as an addendum. But uh, other than that, let me know if you have any more questions or anything else you'd like to know about, any tutorials you'd like to see me make. Um, yeah, I look forward to it. Have a great day. Bye.